In this chapter, we're going to look at the Shell Polysurface command. If you'd like to follow along, please go into your sample files, Chapter 1, and open the file named Shell. So here we have three primitive geometries, and we're going to use the Shell command to shell these out. Now the Shell command allows you to take an object such as one of these, or more complex shapes, and you're going to shell them out and give the material a thickness, more like you'd have in production. If you were to actually build these parts out of plastic, they would almost never be solid parts, depending on the size of them. They would actually have a wall thickness to the plastic. So let's go ahead and look at the shell command. And we can get to the shell command a couple of ways. We can type the word shell, hit enter, or under our solid editing tools, we can select this icon here. So I'll just click on all three of these at once, and we'll apply the command to all three. So as soon as I hit enter, it goes ahead and applies that. So what it's done is made these walls one millimeter thick, but because we only selected the top, it hasn't put a hole all the way through the object. So if I were to take a cutting plane, I'll select this one, I'll go to plane, cutting plane, and I'll go ahead and just apply a Boolean difference. You can see what it's done. It's given us a one millimeter thickness on the sides and across the bottom as well. So these are all solid objects, and if one millimeter is the thickness of the plastic we wanted to use, then that's great. If we want to change that, we undo these, and we'll apply shell again, and I'll just type the word shell. I'm typing the word shell because at the time of this recording, Rhino still hasn't been released and we're working in a beta version. So there are some unfinished features. And currently shell does not have an icon on the toolbar or a place at the top in the windows area for us to select it. So that's why we're typing shell to activate it. So we'll go ahead and hit the shell command again. This time we'll give it a different thickness. So let's say I want to use three millimeters. I'll just type the number three and I'll hit enter. And as you see, the thickness is now switched to three. I'll select the three top surfaces, and this time I'm going to move the camera to the bottom, and I'm going to select the bottom surfaces as well. This time when I hit enter, we'll have three objects that are shelled out. We'll have a material thickness of three millimeters, and the shells will go all the way through. There you can see we have that. And even on this more complex cone shape, it's gone ahead and given us a nice three millimeter thickness on that object. Let's go over to Layers, and we'll switch this off, and we'll open up the layer named Bottle. Now this is a fairly simple shape made from a revolve of a curve, and let's go ahead and apply the Shell command to that. Since the last command I activated was Shell, I could just hit Enter to reapply the same command. I'll turn the thickness down to, let's say, 2 millimeters. I'll select the top, and I'll hit Enter. Give us a nice shelled out object with a wall thickness of two millimeters. Let me undo that. And I'll apply this. But if you read the complete command line, it's going to say select faces to remove from a closed poly surface, which this is, and you have to leave at least one face unselected. So this object's a little different than the solid objects we just used. The solids had a definite top and a definite bottom, but because this is made from a revolve, you can see this thin line here that represents the curve that made the object, and this is a continuous line that goes from top to bottom. So if I select this line here, I'm not actually selecting the bottom, I'm selecting the whole sides and everything else. So we'll see what result we get from this one. So now the only thing that's left is this top. And sure enough, it's shelled out and removed the entire body and just left this top piece with a thickness of two millimeters. We just undo that. Now you can do more and more complex objects here. So let's go up to show objects. I'll click this. And on this layer, I had hidden a cylinder. So we're going to do a couple of things here. The first thing is we'll take this object and we'll do a Boolean difference with this object. Let me switch this color to black so you can see this a little bit easier. Now we have our object. We're going to go ahead and shell it. I'll give it a thickness of 1.5. But we are going to select just the top for now. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit enter. 
as you can see, this area doesn't look any different. And that's because we only selected this top piece to Boolean. But if I move the camera in here, it's a little hard to see, but you can see that it's actually shilled all the way around the cylinder and down past it. So let's undo that, apply the shell command again. So I'll select that, and this time I'm going to shell in here as well. We'll hit enter. So now you see we get a different result. If we look down in here, you can see we have the sides are cut out. So that allows us to see all the way through the object. So we get a much more complex version of the shell in this particular instance. We'll switch off the bottle layer, and we'll switch on this layer named Cubish. So we'll apply shell command again. Then we use a 1.5, click on this top piece, and just like before, we've shelled out this whole object. Let's make that a little more difficult. We'll undo the shell. And we'll switch on the layer named Cutouts. So we'll take the cubish object. We'll do a Boolean difference. And I'll select these purple objects. And notice I can just drag a box from right to left and select them all. So we've Boolean differenced those cutouts away from the main object. Let's hit the Shell command again. And remove this face. And you can see it's done a very complex shelling and given us a one millimeter thickness. I switch to ghosted view. Might be a little easier to see. So you can see there's a one millimeter thickness around all of those cutouts. Switch back to shaded view. And we'll undo the shell. Now I'm going to show you an instance where shell actually fails. So you know kind of what to look for. So before this, I'm going to make a change to how my display works. So I'm going to right click on the blue sphere to get into my object properties. And I'll go to Rhino Options and Appearance. And under Advanced Settings, I'm going to switch on Shaded. And for Back Face Settings, the default is Use Front Face Settings. So if you're seeing the inside of an object or an object gets reversed, that reverse surface is displayed to you in the same color as the standard shading. So I'm going to switch that so we can tell for sure if we're looking at the inside or a bad portion of an object. So I'm going to use a single color for all back faces. And I'll switch that to some sort of a greenish color. Something very different than the red I'm using. We'll do shell again. This time we'll do a thickness of one, just so you can see again how it's going to look as a standard sort of a look. So you can see it's all nicely shelled out and everything worked great. We'll undo that. We'll reapply shell. This time let's give that a thickness of four. So I'll click on this top surface and I get a warning that says the shell results are not solid. And this time when we look in here, anything green is showing us the inside of the object. So you can see there's all this geometry that just was unable to build itself. And that's because all of these cutouts overlapped one another. So the shell command wasn't able to resolve these interior surfaces. In fact, it left this little floating surface sitting here. So you're always going to know if the shell command fails. Rhino is going to warn you. On this particular sample, it was very easy to see. We will run into some instances where it's a little more difficult to see, but if you switch the back face settings to a different color, then those differences will really pop out to you and should really help you resolve the issues. Let's apply that shell command one more time, and we'll use two millimeters this time. So we didn't get any warnings, but this does look like one solid object now. But if I zoom in really, really close, you can see there actually is a gap here. So Rhino is able to work with a very tight tolerance like that. And because it was able to shell it, we didn't get any sorts of warnings. So as you see, the shell command is an extremely powerful command, and it really speeds up the process. In older versions of Rhino, you would have to have offset that surface and then cap the edges of the resulting two surfaces to try and create a solid. This is a much faster, much more powerful new command in Rhino 5.
And that completes our look at the shell polysurface command.